Hello and welcome to Two Han and Son. We are approaching Halloween. I, I am Ryan Stick Jelena. And I am Philip Two Han Jelena. <laughs> Actually, one, we're th- one. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode 36. 36. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so now that we have offended half of <laughs> Eastern Europe, uh, what is up? What is up to his up? Well, I'll tell you what's up. <laughs> uh, it was the uh, Leo Gaji seminar. The grand two on. The Leo. grand two on. Not yeah. just a not just a two on like father here. He's a grand two on. That's yeah. serious. Yeah, he's the head of the art worldwide. Head of the art worldwide. And what art is that? Bikini Tercia Cali. Cali is a Filipino martial arts system. Blade and uh, edged and impact weapons. Fascinating, father. So how did the all in all seminar go? Well, the seminar went very well. Actually, it was two weekends of seminar. He came in on the, two weeks ago today, he came in on the 23rd, okay. and then uh, we would had him uh, up in Ottawa with Michel Duaron, okay. and he's teaching a seminar at the N1 um, Muay Thai Academy up there on the last Saturday and Sunday, and then um, I went up there for the Sunday, on the Monday uh, he was really great. He uh, was working with uh, with us, doing some tactical information. Tactical is like gun disarming and you know more stuff that would be police and military directed. And then he came back, and I've been. I've, it's been great. He's been working with me for about an hour, hour and a half a day, just working on uh, my technique, trying to make sure that my points are pointy and my edges are sharp. And uh, oh, oh, and then we had a seminar in my school at the Gamma Academy at one 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 seven St Catherine Street West. We're at two 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 room. Yeah, more on the second floor. And uh, out of habit, I went I went to the fifth floor <laughs> and, and walked out of the elevator and was terrified to realize that. Uh, I have dementia. <laughs> <laughs> talking about uh, Gamma and talking about downtown, I was, uh, for the first time since we moved, I've been a busy lad, but uh, I walked in Gamma, and that's two floors, and I and all of a sudden, I got in interior decorated mode, and I start vision, visualizing stuff, and I'm like, we're going to put the stereo system here, and we're going to have an interactive menu on the televisions here, and... You know, I start. I started thinking big. Oh well, good. good. Yeah. Then I saw something shiny and forgot all these ideas. <laughs> but, but the good Lord <laughs> and forgot my lens at the gym <laughs> for oh, my camera. It's here now. Okay. Yeah. But um, everybody out there, you got to come down and you got to try a gamma class. Why? Know why? Because when you walk in the door, on a, unlike an animal health clinic emergency, where they're like, "Fine, we'll look at your dog." But it'll cost four thousand dollars. <laughs> anyway, no, no. When you want to try out a discipline at Gamma, all you gotta do is say, "I want to try out," and you can try out a trial class for free. So you don't have to, you know, be stuck with a discipline that just isn't you. You can find out if it is you. Like it's like I want to get into knife fighting, and then you know, five minutes into, oh, f- I don't want to get into knife fighting because I don't want knife fighting to get into me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then and then you're like, oh, but I already paid for a month, damn it, and you're stuck in it. No, no, this is not high school. This is more like adult dead. You can choose. <laughs> you can choose to learn folks now what kind of disciplines we got at gamma dad well we do have a uh, keju kenbo and what then keju kenbo just a brief that's a hawaiian street fighting martial art that would be correct yes um these tough hawaiian filipinos came together around the time of the second world war a lot of them were uh they came actually together after the second world war a lot of them served in the american forces <laughs> And they, uh, I'm really glad that we came into the basement so we wouldn't be disturbed <laughs> by mom cooking some f-ing dinner. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys can hear Jamunji happening upstairs, but uh, we sure can. Uh, anyway, yeah. um, what were we talking about? I feel like a, I feel like an annoyed neighbor. <laughs> you can turn it down up there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, that was Kaji Kimbo. We can't. We can't. We can't forget the rest, Dad. Okay. Well, no. There's Kaji Kimbo. That yeah. was. A bit, that's a Hawaiian martial art. Yeah. A Hawaiian self defense. A lot of body conditioning, self defense. Uh, then we do Muay Thai. Muay Thai is a pretty popular art. We also uh, we have a fight team. So you know, yeah, we have a, a strong Muay Thai group. We are, we actually have about uh, nine classes a week, mm-hmm. and plus people can come in and work out on their own. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, then on top of that, we have Cali. Cali is a Filipino uh, martial art uh, that uh, uses uh, edged and impact weapons, as I think I mentioned before. Yeah. And uh, so we do that class. Uh, and then we also have Jeet Kune Do, which is Bruce Lee's uh, rather well-known martial art. Uh, 
we have some uh, certified instructors. There's uh, We have two or three certified instructors uh, that are all certified under Dan and Asanto that are teaching for us. Uh, and we also uh, teach boxing and we have uh, wrestling. So you are a real MMA gym. You're not just a gym that says, here's our MMA class. Here's a couple of martial arts and a blender. Hope for the best. And uh yeah, you know, we're going to kind of teach you how to punch. We're going to kind of teach you how to kick. We're going to kind of kind of teach you how to grapple. It's like, no, you can become a real MMA martial artist where you study this, this, and this and make your own martial arts salad with this information. Well, actually, that's that's really do is what we do. But a lot of people, you know, when they, they put together an MMA class, and, and I don't want to say anything bad about those MMA classes because sometimes that's all people have time for. But, mm-hmm. you know, when you look at people who are actually making waves or have made waves in the past, uh, guys like George St. Pierre, those guys actually went out. I mean, George was a Kyoko Shinkai black belt, but when he had access, and then he, you know, he when he took Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which he actually took at our school, mm-hmm. he uh, he was with a guy by the name of Christophe Midou, and Christophe Midou was, um, a, he practiced a bit of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in France, but he brought, uh, George St. Pierre to our school to uh, learn originally from Vagni Fabiano and then uh, after Vagni Fabiano was lured to Toronto uh, then we got uh, Fabio Holanda teaching for us and uh, George St. Pierre came and worked out with us Uh, you know it's funny because he now claims that other people were his teachers but it's one of that's more one of those funny things that happened when you know people have to support their team that they are on now and kind of ignore the team they were on. Uh, but we were, you know, I mean, we were important enough to him that uh, our guys served as corner men uh, while he was fighting for his world championships. And uh, we were there. I mean, we, don't, we haven't been there for a while, but, uh, you know, but one of the things, the only reason I mentioned George is because George, he got his black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He trained with guys who fought on the Canadian wrestling team at the Olympic level. Uh, he actually trained with people. The people that are in Montreal training with the national team respect George St. Pierre as a wrestler, not as a martial art guy who happens to be wrestling with them. You know, because there are a bunch of those guys, a lot of guys who are, you know, good martial artists and who want to be MMA guys. They, well, they find their way there. But, you know, that's, you know, you aren't welcome in a wrestling club unless you know how to wrestle. They're not interested in having you there. So uh, we're very fortunate that we have Jason Chen teaching at our gym. Jason Chen is a, is a rated national level coach. He's a level three. Uh, I think to be uh, at a certain, you know, for him, the next level would be, for him would be level four. And that would be, that would take a couple of years, a couple of years of almost full-time work on that to get there. I don't know this for sure, but from what I gather, there are only two level fives in Canada, and they're both at the Montreal Wrestling Club at the uh, YM, y- YWYMHA up on, uh, I guess, the Wilderton near DeCarry. And that would be Victor Zilberkin and uh, this guy, Rob, who's, I'm not going to say his family name because, quite honestly, I don't know him and I, I don't remember it. And it would be better that if I just called him Rob than Rob, whose second name I don't know. I would just like to interject. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't remember people's names a lot and sometimes once in a while i try to break the habit and i try to make a good old college try of a guess and then you're wrong and when i'm wrong it's so much worse than just calling them you and avoiding the issue <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true anyway but that's all yeah. the stuff we have at the school uh we've moved just two months ago a little over two months ago and and so uh we're still going through the uh breakdown stage not you know, quite a butterfly yet. Not still, quite a butterfly still yet. Still getting that out of that still, yeah, uh, because, caterpillar. Well, when you are physically in a different space, I mean, the, before we had poured concrete floors mm. uh, and, you know, concrete with, uh, you know, so it was concrete uh, building. So anytime you wanted to hang a bag up, all you have to do is look where you wanted to hang it, drill a hole into that concrete, and poof, there you had the bag hanging. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this new place, we don't have that access. So uh, we have to work harder at doing it because uh, the, the building itself is very strong, but it's, it's based on a, what they call I-beam construction. Yeah. So, like for example, if you have concrete, you drill a hole, you put an anchor, poof, it'll stay there for a million years. Mm-hmm. Now, with this other stuff, if you drill a hole in it, 
it will powder, and if you <laughs> put something on it, it will come out. <laughs> so, so what's the, so so what's the you, solution? We have to be much more creative. And okay. we, have, we have come up with a solution, and it will be in force, but it's, it's, you have to work, you know, it's You're just not as easy. That. Well, anyway, now that we spent anyway. 20 minutes talking about your freaking ceiling. Let's <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I mean, we, but we've got that. We were yeah. now, we're, it's, this was a bit of a, it was a bit of a problem, but now we, we have all sorts of things going on. I mean, we have, but we were able to get new mats. So, yeah. um, so our, our floor is, is really good and, you know, that we, it's, it's very bright and sunny. We've got windows on two sides. Yeah. There's window, I mean, all, not just a couple of windows on both sides. We have four windows on one side and 13 windows on the other. Mm. So uh, it's a, it's really quite spectacular. It's very bright and airy. It's very welcoming. It's very yeah. nice. Well, the toilet works. The toilet works. I know, I know this because uh, when, when visiting the gym for the first time since we moved, I, I, I took a crap in it. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, was, we uh, all needed to know that. I was trying to make it feel more like home. <laughs> and nothing makes me feel more like home. <laughs> Than trusting the toilet there. <laughs> I'm probably going down to a seminar in the United States with uh, Dan and Asanto because uh, <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. I've, I've, I'm an instructor under Dan and Asanto, but I, it's, I, he has seminars almost every weekend all over the world. Danny's like comic. Danny's like a comic con. Like there's a comic con happening every weekend. Yeah, but uh, but they're still all busy. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah, this is all one man. <laughs> Yeah. You know, in the Santo Com. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but I haven't been to, um, a, I've been sponsoring my own seminars of his, but that just means that I'm, I go there and I do things and I don't have any energy left to actually participate. But when you go and pay money to go somewhere, you, the participation factor is very high. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to work yourself out there. I'm going to work myself like, look out at me, there. Dan. Look at me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope I'm not like that. I'm hoping I'm not that transparent, okay? <laughs> okay. Speaking of transparent, <laughs> the new Fantastic Four movie sucks. <laughs> Save your money. <laughs> and The Flash just premiered season two. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's happening right now, and I'm talking to you instead of watching it. So, But we're recording it, I right? Th I, think, I think I'm growing as a man. <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, all right, and without further ado, I think we're going to go upstairs and we're going to talk to the man himself. We're okay. going to talk to Leo Gaji, uh, Grand Tuhan Leo Gaji. Yes, okay. Well, All let's right. go do it. All right, so um, it's been about two seconds on tape, but uh, in real life, it was three minutes of us grunting and wheezing <laughs> up the stairs, up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> with the recording gear. Uh, right now, we're in a we're in a dad's living room, and we're um, we're sitting next to the man himself, Gran Tuhan Leo. Leo, how are you doing? Lovely, lovely. You know. <laughs> Did you put on your protective goggles to talk into our microphone? Yes, yeah, so I can see my great uh, two honey also. <laughs> okay, all right. Day, you know, yes. It's important that I can see you guys when I'm talking. All right, all right. So how are you doing? How was your, how was your stay in Canada this year? Well, as I said, lovely. You know, uh, the hospitality and the uh, friendship and, of course, the old students uh, still uh, cling to their uh, pain and agony. And okay. of course, you know, uh, the newcomers are also trying to experience um, uh, what they, had, they have not experienced. But you know, for all this week, you know, we had great fun. Everybody I, had a joy, you know, and uh, my great uh, King Philip here has a good time. <laughs> he yeah, a good time. I heard you were working dad pretty hard, actually. No, you were working everyone pretty hard. How many? You had to do a hundred. What? Like. <laughs> I, I, uh, we were doing uh, some takedowns, and then Grantuan decided that, well, I was going to entertain everybody. So um, there's a technique we would practice, which was uh, you would enter, and then you would do a movement, and then you do a takedown. So what he did is said, okay, everybody, now, Philip will do 100, we'll count for 100. <laughs> so everybody had to count 100, like one, two, three, and so... Um, the person and, and myself with whom I was training went back and forth exchanging takedowns of the same kind. And then when I thought it was over, it my hell had actually just begun. <laughs> so he had me doing all 14 people um, for a count of 100. So I think, um, yes, I, I was amused. Yes, absolutely amused. <laughs> well, you know, there is a saying that, you know, uh, the feeling of touching is the most important, you know, the power of touch. 
And that's what he want. That's what I want him to touch everybody, and everybody touch him also. So <laughs> the touch of pain and the touch of uh, uh, agony uh, combined together, you know, everybody makes happy. So uh, this this training is really a very effective way in order that everybody will have to have some feelings on how they apply the technique. Because technique are so many techniques, but the most important is you have to associate yourself how the technique works. You see. Then right then, because our principle is the tri-B formula, tri, the principles of trigonometric, then he must be able to apply what he call the different application of different angles so that, you know, when they are used to this, then, you know, it's easy for them to apply it in reality. You see, it's important that uh, the feeling of touch is important. Hands feeling, on. Feeling of touch is important, Dad. When you stab somebody without touching them, it's very impersonal. Make sure, <laughs> make sure you strangle them, too. <laughs> All right, so um, how is Ottawa, Leo? Well, Ottawa is still Ottawa, and everybody is also have a good time there with, uh, you know, Michelle. Mm. And uh, the old students there will also have a good time. You know, every time I come in there, you know, everybody is expecting, of course, some new changes. But uh, actually, what we are trying to do is we rehabilitate each one of them, you know, so that they can at least be more than uh, uh, superior than anybody. You know, we upgrade our people in Picketers, yeah. Uh, with uh, greater uh, importance because when I introduce a technique, this technique uh, is an added technique to the previous techniques. So uh, our principle is to see to it that there is what we call increase of knowledge because what we are trying to develop is to develop what we call combat engineers. Uh, that is the most important. And, uh, you know, King Philip here is also uh, more than an engineer because, you know, uh, he has a feeling of uh, being... Uh, shall we say, uh, uh, aggressive and very determined to be superior. And that is what King Philip says. <laughs> that is the most important that I notice, no? That's, Ever since then. That's what I, when I think of dad, I think of aggressive and superior. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. That's right, that's right, you know, superior and aggressive. Well, let you know, in the terms of leadership, uh, must somebody or someone that leads for others to follow must be superior in intelligence and also in skill. Because in our system, the Piketty system is that we develop the person on a skill development, you know, to a greater extent, until the time that he realizes that he needs to be an expert. And that expertise will uh, bring him to such a respect that everybody really appreciate and he wants to follow how, ex how expert he is and how expert, how expert is his skill. So when he continue to uh, develop more, then they go into a higher tech category, which is called the mastery. So from skill development to expertise, then to mastery, then, you know, you're not considered a graduate yet because, you know, you're just a beginner. Mm -hmm. So every time we go into the process, everybody learns everybody. You, they teach how to learn and they learn how to teach. All right. Well, Dad, um, do you have any questions for Leo? I know you've been with him all week, but is there anything you would like to publicly ask him? Um, Something that our listeners would find titillating? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm actually... Besides uh, how many are in a hundred, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> One hundred or two hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, no, actually, I've been exposed more to uh, the higher higher methods of the system this week. It's been quite eye-opening to uh, see what you do and how easily it is to hit my fingers to with a stick. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's been great because I've been able to really understand a little bit deeper exactly what it is I've been trying to do all these years. And it's, it's a very nice feeling to know that, you know, wherever I've been, however I've done, there's still more to do. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find to yourself, Leo, that you're still learning after all these years, even well, by accident? Well, you see, uh, uh, our system is a science. A science is always uh, developing to a certain extent that... Uh, you learn how to teach, and you learn how to teach, meaning you teach how to learn. In other words, it's a developing uh, intelligence. So in our system, especially the blade culture, you have to be continually uh, uh, observing the proper procedures in the proper way that every time you deliver a strike, it has to be perfect. Because the nature of the blade culture is sharp. So every time you deliver your blade, you deliver your hand or whatever you have, it has to be sharp and has to be accurate and has to have a target, specific target, so that, you know, it didn't waste your time. In other words, if you aim for the hand, the hand must be completely uh, reached to the point that he cannot use the hand. So every time we deliver 
the message of controlling the person, he must not be able to move because that is how the nature of the blade culture is. When I touch your finger and your finger starts to be walking, then you cannot use that anymore. So even a stick, whether it's in the hand, whether it's a knife, it has to be accurately uh, uh, going into the target. That's why the principles of geometry here is applied. Exact science. So, uh, you know, with uh, the great King Philip here, you know, he called him King Philip all the time because, you know, without King Philip, without Philip, there is no Philippines. You know? <laughs> that reminds that as far as Filipino is concerned, you know, they should owe something to King Philip here. And that's why, you know, it's very hard for King Philip to be, to be missing in action. You okay. see? So every time that Philip is around, you know, you know, I always tell everybody, if there's any person that we have to recognize and give this consideration of respect, it's, you know, King Philip. Because, you know, uh, he is a tohon of the 12th degree, you know what I mean? 12 level, you know, 12, you know when? Because, you know, that is the highest peak of intelligence. So he has to revolve in the 12th cycle of the moon. He has to, uh, uh, to move into the 12 hours in a day. Uh, he has 12 endocrine glands, and he has, he has to follow uh, among the 12 disciples, you know. So <laughs> that is the most <laughs> important. So uh, we are progressively uh, advancing our system so much so that the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the, also the Armed Forces of India uh, is now a full-time Pikitu Tertia uh, trained, and they are developing more uh, concentration in terms of the soldiers because... The world of today is a blade culture. History repeats itself. It's not just all guns. You see, in every movie now, there without a knife, without bleeding, uh, with the blade, there is the, 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 the movie is not exciting. All Sword play and knife player make yes. every movie much more exciting. See, That's true. See, without the just a gun, you know, because you know the gun, you know, you can see, you cannot even see somebody that is being shot because you know somebody is far away. But if you see that, you know, like for example, the Lord of the Rings, ah. Uh, or the, uh, what do you call this? The, yeah, if Aragorn had an Uzi, uh, that fight, the, <laughs> that last battle would the assassins, be... assassins, you know. The, yeah. uh, all of these things, you know. Mm -hmm. It reminds us that in the history years, long before we were born, everybody is fighting with a the blade. There was no gun during the time. And there's an excitement because, you know, when you take hold of somebody and you chop his head, you enjoy it, you know. <laughs> because you feel, you feel that feeling of... Uh, satisfying yourself. Imagine your slash is exactly delivering that hit, and you know, and you wipe out in in no less than uh, five minutes, you wipe out around ten people, and that is that is expertise, you know. So if you have a forty-five and you have seven rounds, you kill only seven, but if you have the blade, you kill twenty. I mean, you have more than twenty rounds. But the most important thing is the blade culture, uh, is the Filipino culture, because we were the only country in Asia that won the three major wars. The 333 years war against Spain, then the American war from 1907-1920, and then the Japanese. What is in the Philippines that made these people interested to come to the Philippines? Why didn't they go to Malaysia, Malaysia or Indonesia? Why didn't they go there and invade this country? Why didn't they go to, uh, what do you call that, the nearest uh, country that we have here, Singapore? Why didn't you have to go to the Philippines? Especially the especially Philippines is not one island. 7,100 islands. Yeah? And you have to... You have to swim to another island, and you go to another island. Okay. But if you're on the mainland, then of course, you know, you take the horse and you go to over to the other side. But here, it's divided by water. What is in the Philippines that made these people so interested? You know why? Because King Philip is there. <laughs> he is there. <laughs> as far as the culture is concerned, that is the difference. So, in all aspects of history, huh? The reason why this country is interested in the Philippines because they want to know how brave are the Filipinos. Mm -hmm. That is the treasure of the Filipinos, bravery. You know, we are not, our culture is not to make uh, noodles. Okay? Our culture is courage and bravery. As Jerome MacArthur said, give me 10,000 um, uh, Filipinos and I will conquer the world. So as far as the martial arts is concerned, we are growing. The Pigitersia is growing, huh? By the thousands. This coming 2016, I will be in Kenya and I will be in South Africa. Uh, so, these are the improvements that had been uh, observed. That as far as the growth of Piketty is concerned, it is growing because people want intelligence in fighting. And they can get only from Piketty Yeah, they can go to other martial arts, that's okay, you know. But when it comes to the blade culture, it requires a high sense of intelligence. Because one mistake, 
you will decorate the grave. So we are a discipline, a culture. At the same time, huh? it is a challenge. Well, um, we're almost out of time here on Two On and Sun today. But right before we go, let's uh, have one fun question I don't think anyone ever asks you. Um, what is your favorite song to sing in karaoke? Oh, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to remember. Okay. Don't cry for me while you're bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't cry for me while you're bleeding. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, everyone. Thank you for listening to Two On and Son. I am Ryan Stegjelena. And I'm Philip Two On Jelena. And thank you very much, uh, Leo, for talking on our Grand show. Grand Two On. Grand Two On, Leo. You, yeah. you, cannot, you cannot miss the Grand Two On when mentioning Leo's yeah. name. All right. Well, thank you very much for stopping by, Leo. Thank, thank you for coming to Canada. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And um, yeah, have a great uh, have a great day, evening, whenever you well, listen actually, to this. Well, actually, well, just to let you know, he's he's uh, going back to uh, Philadelphia tomorrow, but uh, he'll be going to Vancouver at the end of the month. And just at the end of the very very end of the month, he's going to be going to Germany because they will be celebrating 20 years of Piquet Tercia in Germany. And Uli Weidel, the uh, managing director of Piquet Tercia uh, Germany, will be there, and he will. He has a countrywide celebration, and Grand Tuan will be the guest of honor. Oh, fantastic. So everyone out there, uh, make sure you check it out, especially your Vancouverians. Vancouver, Vancouver uh, the last, I think, 24th and 25th of October, and then the next weekend, over to Germany. All right, well, we could use some more German fans. I think we got a couple, but yeah, well, uh, hey. let, let's spread on that. Maybe we'll be guests of honor one day. Maybe. Maybe they'll let us in their airport. Oh, I don't know. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you very much for listening, and have a good night. Good night. All right, thank you.